Hello, and welcome to the real LCS Analyst Desk with the Wild Z and my uh, constant uh, cohort and co-host, uh, Lazy Boy, who you can see is currently uh, a, P a JPEG eating a uh, piece of bacon. Uh, please it's not bacon. Oh. It's not bacon. Uh, please introduce yourself, Lazy Boy, because they know me, but I don't think they really know you. I... My name is Lazy Boy, and I play League of Legends on the occasion. And I also am very interested in the pro scene. Um, granted, it's mostly because I'm in a fantasy league, and five dollars is on the line, so... Nice. And you are not here because I did not force you uh, to be here at uh, Knife Point. Because you walked into my slum, and uh, uh -huh. you looked like a good enough cohort. That's not why oh, yeah, you're yeah. here. You're here because... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Say, yes. You told me yes, say. yes, yes. That is what I told yes, you to say. Yes. Alright, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to be reigning where we currently believe the LCS teams are right now. Uh, I think it should be... It's going to be a bit more relaxed than my videos. We're just going to kind of be... Uh, shooting the crack at each other um talking about our placements why we think they're there you know stuff like that so uh this might run about i think 40 minutes but we'll see anyway i hope you all stick around this is something new i'm doing if you guys like it uh let me know and i can keep uh bringing on my faithful compatriot here uh who i will eventually reveal his video camera uh just Live with the jank for a I'm minute. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yeah, yet. Yeah, he's not ready yet. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and begin revealing our tier list. All right, let's start at... Do you want to start from the top or the bottom? Uh, let's start... We're going to start from the bottom. Let's start from the bottom. Yeah. All right, so... Not, my face actually gets revealed. Uh, we're going to... Yeah, okay, here we go. All right, so... Oh, whoa, 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 there he whoa, is. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, All right. so for yeah. our for our number ten, uh, we currently have uh, ah! <laughs> we have we have Dignitas at number ten. Uh, I think this is pretty easy to agree on. I think Dignitas has looked the yeah. by far the worst, especially when you look at their most recent Golden Guardians game. Yeah, the Golden Guardians game, I mean, you've got a top laner who can only play Riven. Um, you know, there's that. Um, they switched out the mid laner for the Froggen, right? Or they switched out Froggen for this guy, you know? Um, I don't know. It's all right. It's all right. I, I think um, they recently went on a three-game win streak, which was kind of interesting. But, like, I think that was more due to the teams that they were playing against being really bad more than them, like, actually stepping up their level. However, I will admit, I think Afromu has looked, like, by far, I think he's actually looked like a top five support. And most of the reason they get these wins is through Afromu just playing really well. However, I, I think it's going to be really hard to get, you know, wins when your top laner is a Riven one trick, uh, your jungler is flaming the whole team. Your mid laner is an Azir one trick, and Johnson is Johnson. Yeah, um, but I don't want you to get too ahead of yourself. I mean, you're saying that this uh, Aphromoo's top five. I mean, you haven't even released the video. I have not released the video. Well, that's report, that's a yeah, that's a te teasing. Yeah, I'm teasing a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. And you, you heard it here, folk. You heard it here first, folks, on the podcast. All right, let's uh, move on to our next one. Number nine, we have CLG. Uh, again, another thing I think we are agreeing on. I don't think this is a very you know, surprising one. I think uh, CLG was kind of like, you know, big... Oh, I can move you up, by the way. I think CLG were kind of being a bit of uh, big, funny hucksters when they came in saying that they were going to be the team that could beat C9. Um, they said that? Yeah, they did. At the start of the season, there were interviews, and they said, I think that we're better than C9. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Ruin continues to be ruining the LCS with his poor performance. Um, why'd, they back in? why'd they put him back in? Motivational. Yeah. He, he's motivated now. He's motivated, motivated to run like, it down again. It's not like Deus had an amazing week. Yeah, I don't think Deus was amazing, but I think he, at least he wasn't running it down. 
Okay, top lane tier, not running it down in the LCS. That's that already puts you like top five. Yeah. And so, I, I've said this in my my tier list. I think Ruin is one of the worst imports in the entire region. I think he he is he used to be spared from that title um, when Aka was playing and Soaz were playing, but those two have been since demoted to Academy. Um, so Ruin is now the new uh, owner of the title of worst import in the region. So and here's the rough thing too I had with putting uh, CLG where I did is because. For this split in particular, how things are going right now, I do. They are obviously a finals team, but I do believe that they're just teams better than them. You know, they. I guess they just had an easier strength of schedule. It's it's difficult because I mean, obviously they they have the stats and they've beaten the right teams mm -hmm. to put themselves in the finals potentially. But you mean in playoffs? The final playoff. The final end of the <laughs> you season. think they're gonna? You think they're gonna make it to finals? No, 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 no. That's okay. Not I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm, it's all good. No, no, no. You know the, the playoff. Oh yeah, I can respect that. Week nine or whatever it is. I do not think they're gonna make top eight. I don't think it's happening. Really? I think there is a matchup between CLG and Hundred Thieves coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I think if 100 Thieves win that, then CLG is not making top 8. If 100 Thieves loses that, then they're not making top 8. Hmm. Um, that would be my opinion. I'm pretty sure 100 Thieves is going to win that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think... You know, this isn't, this isn't spoiling too much of my tier list, but I think um, Ruin runs it down. He's ruining the LCS. I think Wiggly is... Um, uh, I, I barely see him play. Um, Poe Belter... Yeah, Poe Belter... Like Poe Belter's probably the best piece of this team, and that's the problem. Stixe, um, is... You know, he plays he plays League of Legends. He does. Occasionally. But he's never... I don't think he's ever going to win you a game. Uh, and then Smoothie is also uh, competing to see if he can run it down more than Ruin sometimes. So, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Um, CLG, maybe, maybe if you guys want to beat Cloud Nine, maybe you um, try. All right. Make so Deus in. Put Deus back in. Yeah, you you messed up my fantasy, so now I'm angry. Put you in ninth. All right. So for number eight, this is our first disagreement. We have the I put one hundred thieves, and uh, JT put in. Lazy Boy was kind enough to put in uh, Immortals. Yeah. So I will let... Uh, you know, I think mine's a bit more surprising, um, but I will let you go first. What's your opinion is my... you know, What's your, what's your opinion? Um, I think if this was the... I think yours would be accurate if this was the Meteos... Hundred thieves. Oh, if this was the media, not the media of hundred thieves. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're better than that. They are better than eighth place. Okay. They make playoffs. All right. I mean, eighth makes playoffs. Now, granted, I would have granted also if they didn't start off with the media's hundred thieves. I think they could be higher than eighth place. Ooh. Even. Ooh. Now that's that's a hot take. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, also, this I have team to say about eight. Immortals, mm -hmm. because Immortals swapped out their whole roster, right? Right. And it kind of shows, because it would have been interesting to see how well they would have done if it was... If they started out the, the roster? With the Academy team. Yeah. You know? Um, I think they're a very promising team. Um, Smithy's a proven jungler, right? Insanity, according to him... He's like Faker, but worse. Oh god, I can't believe he said that in an interview, man. <laughs> oh my god. Here's, uh, here's my take. All right. I think that 100 Thieves, looking at them... Because I put in this roster, right? But, like, I, looking at their whole season, um, the only reason that they edged out CLG is because of their recent performance. But looking at their right. whole season, it's hard for me to put them, like, super high up. Now, let's say that they had put in their whole, like, this roster from the beginning. 
yeah, maybe I put them seventh. Maybe I even put them sixth. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... I don't know. I, I'm kind of like... I think someday's really good. El Contracto, sometimes he contracts ADHD and runs it down. Um, yeah. Ryoma, I am... I'm slowly getting off the Ryoma hate train, actually. I think Ryoma's starting to show some promise, but I think it's still too early to really say... Cody Sun, I am a Cody Sun hater. I am the Cody Sun hater. At least since he hasn't been on clutch. Um, I think Cody Sun has some of the worst positioning of all the ADCs in the entire league. And that makes it really hard for me to, like, be, like... <laughs> and then, uh, Poom is pooing on me. So. Hey, 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 don't you talk about my boy like that. Poom is carrying the whole team on his shoulders. Poom, right. if Poom's that the best is... part of this team, then this team is done. <laughs> I don't know, man. There has to be something special if you don't have the standard um, headshot like literally all of the other players do. He's, you know, my my man. Everybody else out here, like with their, you know, shoulders up. Poom's like, <laughs> he, he's asserting his dominance. He is yeah. dominant. This man is huge. He is. He is pretty huge. He is I. Larger than life. I would like to see... I think Poom could potentially be good. I think 100 Thieves, the thing is, is that, like, the way that they're going, like, the way that they want to, like, bring up these uh, talents at, from the from solo queue and stuff like that and make them good, I think the thing is, is that, like, 100 Thieves is just going to be one of those teams that, like... Let's, let's say, let's say uh, Ryoma gets picked up by... Uh, Dignitas, right? And let's say he joins Dig, and he hits his peak, and he, like, he starts, you know, pooping on everybody, right? And then Dignitas goes to ninth place. Let's say that, like, let's... Actually, <laughs> Dig's, Dig's not a good example. Let's say CLG picks up Ryoma, right? Mm -hmm. And then Ryoma starts, like, smashing people, and CLG ends up going, like, fourth, Right? 100 Thieves does not strike me. Like, I think 100 Thieves is going to find these talents, but I don't think they have the infrastructure to actually make them hit their peak. So 100 Thieves is forever probably going to be this team that's like, we found Ryoma. We found him. We found, we found him. We found him. He's, you know, he's not on our team. Uh, we couldn't make him good, but we found him. Where'd he go? I don't know. That's that's what I'm picturing for what's going to happen for 100 Thieves with their yeah. current plan. I think I think they're probably really good at scouting, but I th I don't think they have the infrastructure to actually make their teams good. Yeah, they really seem to be playing the long con, especially with their not, you know, with their team below academy, right? Yeah, with uh, 100 Thieves next. Yeah, yeah the amateur yeah. team. But yeah. So now uh I, I might as well we'll just go ahead and start discussing Immortals. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I think we discussed 100 Thieves, because I think you have 100 Thieves ahead of Immortals, which I actually understand. I think, um, 100 Thieves' playstyle has been a bit more aggressive, and so I can kind of actually understand putting them higher. I actually think, I don't know, I think Alorim, if you just look player by player, I think, the reason I put Immortals where they are is I think that Immortals is like, currently with the Academy team, they are the baseline for the LCS. If you are better than Immortals, you might be a good team. Mm -hmm. If you are worse than Immortals, something needs to change fast. Um, I think in their current performance, I think they they almost beat EG, they almost beat TL, they almost beat um, they've almost beaten a lot of teams. They beat TSM. Um, they beat FlyQuest. They should have beaten Golden Guardians. But they're, they're, they're so close to being this really good team. Like, Insanity, I've, I'm actually really excited for Insanity because he looks like Jazuke if Jazuke wasn't running it down. And that's something to actually get really excited about. I think X Smithy is kind of doing his old man thing where he's like, guys, work together and we can become a good team. Mm -hmm. I think Apollo and Hakuo is, like, probably one of the most... Has been, always will be, one of the most... Eh. It bot lanes in the whole league.
but you pick them up because you pick them up because they're consistent. They're consistently exactly. Eh. Yeah. Um, I Even Sanity does have a lot of promise, though. Yeah. I mean, he he looks, you know. He do, I think he actually does look pretty good. Yeah. Um, X Smithy. I don't know. X Smithy's getting up in age. If he wants to be the the playing, if he wants to be the guy, if he wants to be the old man mentor for the rest of his life, I I, I could see it. I could see maybe you take this roster, make some changes, and maybe next split, maybe they're a pretty strong team. I don't know. The Apollo Hakuo bot lane has never excited me, but it's always like, you know who they're better than, and you know who they're worse than. When when I saw Alltech and Gate, I was like, they are worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if you keep Apollo and Hakuo. Um, I think you, I don't know. I think there's some definitely yeah. promise. I think this team could definitely, they have shown that they can potentially punch up, and I think that makes them a really good upset team. Will they actually make playoffs? I don't know. They're three and nine. That's pretty hard. They'd have to win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'd have to win at least four matches in order to get at least tiebreakers. So, eh, maybe it's going to be really hard. But I do think if you see how they've been playing, if you ignore the Aka lineup that made me ache, all my bones ached watching Aka. Yes. Um, yes, I agree. I think you can say that they might. I think they could have totally made playoffs. All right, let's move on to our sixth place team. This is the this is where sixth place is my cutoff. Where I think it, this is where a team is good mm -hmm. for North America. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Nope, no. Nope. Hold. Te technical difficulties. Uh, Alzheimer's. All right, here we go. Number six, we have Evil Number Geniuses. Six. E.G. You can go first. No, I, I, I disagree with your, uh, what'd you say? You said Immortals was the, the benchmark team. I think EG's the benchmark team. EG's the benchmark team? Yeah. Okay. Give me, give me your, give me your take. Give me your take. Especially the old roster with, uh, the Jizuke, you know? <laughs> I mean, they were such a coin flip team, you know, but they were still able to pull out wins. It's like, you know, I just felt that if you beat EG, you deserve the top spot. If you lost to EG... Okay, I mean, but they were so they were so coin flippy though. Like one day you'd get Kumo, the other day you'd get Kumo. Like one day you'd get Jizuke, the other day you'd get yeah. Jizuke. Yeah, Jizuke, you just like I don't know. I think like maybe with their current roster, you say that they're the benchmark team because I think Golden Glue is a much more consistent mid laner. Um, right. You know, their bot lane is probably the most like. Um, like, their bot lane doesn't make mistakes, right. and they scale for late. So if you can get advantages against them, then that's really big. Um, yeah, totally. And then Hooney, I don't know, Hooney's keeping the coin flip alive, because, uh... I like Hooney a lot, I think he's really funny, but, like, mm -hmm. man, that guy knows how to run down some games sometimes. <laughs> he, is a, he is a top laner. He is a top laner. But who can beat his gangplank? Who can beat his gangplank? You know? You know, yeah. that, that gangplank that he 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 ran it down on? Who can beat it? <laughs> the turrets. Apparently not licorice. Not licorice. <laughs> not licorice. Licorice can't beat his gangplank. But yeah, I think I don't think we need to really go too much into EG, especially since they're a new roster. But I think like yeah, yeah, if yeah. we're talking about the EG before, I think you say that is a super coin flippy team. I think you still put them sixth because I don't know, man. I think Jazuke was like super like Jazuke was like so good, and then it's like he just regressed to being the coin flip Ooh, man. Dance. Yeah, Kumo. I think you could keep him in the roster. I think the ultimate like roster for EG is Kumo, Sven, Golden Glue, Bang, Zazel. That is like the consistent team. Then you have the benchmark team. Hooney's in this team because he gives that little bit of oomph that it needs to go yeah. over. Like, there are games that Hooney's a little bit like Jazuke. Hooney will sometimes win you games. 
Like, if you give this guy Rumble, he will win you the game. But he will also sometimes, because the way he plays, he plays very greedily, he plays very much like, he looks for fights to try and win, he will sometimes look like he's inting his ass off. Um, right. But, like, it's better because it's in top lane. Yeah, that's just, that's just the top lane mindset. Because if you're in top lane and you run it down, it's like, okay, well, we can, we can work with this. But if you're in mid lane and you run it down, it's like, oh god, we just lost the whole game. Yeah, exactly. Very so, true, very true. so we'll see what they do. They might put Kumo in. I would be I would be interested to see Kumo come back in. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think but maybe we keep in. Maybe we keep. Way better. It, it is currently better. I think Jazuke. I think Jazuke had his chance to stop running it down, and um, Golden Glue came in. He didn't run it down, and he got to get the job. Yeah, and they signed him. Yeah, they signed him for the rest of the so, season. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we see any more Jazuka. We maybe see Kumo. All right, number five, another another disagreement. This is one I think uh, Lazy Boy Lazy Boy is gonna kind of tear into me a little bit on. So I will I will let him I'll let him loose. Man, I gotta be honest with you. I I, I don't know what happened. I I watched. I, I don't know. I didn't see you. You bought a ticket on the Tanner train for some reason. I don't know why. Why has Golden Guardians not shown up on the tier list yet for you? I mean, come on. <laughs> why haven't they shown up yet? Where are they? <laughs> yeah, where, where are they? Where they should have they should have shown up by now. Where'd they go? Know, yeah, yeah. Where's the eleventh place? Um we were <laughs> 11th Dan, you hate Dante. No I don't. I put him I put him fifth. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's, um... We can kind of talk about Golden Guardians and TSM here, and then we'll save a, a third special team um, for after. So let's... I, I want to hear your thoughts on putting Golden Guardians fifth. I mean... Actually, let's just focus on Golden Guardians for this bit. Because we'll, we'll talk about TSM later. Yeah, because I think, um... They, um... They've done what they needed to do. They're they're middle of the pack team. Yeah. I mean, right about here, to be quite honest with you, fifth place. The rest of this tier list, pretty much up until first place, they're all the same, man. <laughs> they're all they're all just gonna lose against each. They're all just gonna like it's a toss up whether they're gonna beat beat each other or not. But we all know who they're going to lose to. So. Um, we all know who they're gonna lose to. That is true. Yeah, but the thing is, like, um, they just they haven't wowed me like the rest of the teams. Granted, one of them I can see why <laughs> they're in the spot they are. Why they're in fifth place? See <laughs> <I can see> why. <laughs> um. Here's my... I'm going to be devil's advocate for Golden Guardians here. I think most of the teams that I actually also have above Golden Guardians... The reason I have them in, in where I have them right now is because I am seeing growth and improvement from this team. I am not seeing growth and improvement from most of the teams below and TSM. And uh, most of the teams, and there's a couple of teams above uh, TSM that I don't think are showing much growth. I think yeah. Golden Guardians were definitely rocky in the mid, like week three, week four, week two. But like, yeah. they've recently been showing, like, Closer is like, Closer is good. Closer yeah, is no, no. one of the, no, like, Closer is yeah. definitely like the second best jungler in the league. Hanser, like, his stats are like actually kind of crazy. For like how much nothing he does. I mean, maybe it's just my fault. And then, I don't know. I, 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 like, that concert, like I can't. <laughs> he, he he escapes me. Like I forget that he's playing. But like I see like FBI, and like when that guy gets a lead, he's actually like a pretty good ADC. Like he has really good positioning. He has good damage output. He's just a really strong ADC when he gets it. He and he's also relatively able to get a lead in lane. 
without having a support. Yeah. That's crazy. That is true, because Hooney... Hooney is... Hooney is... Hooney is, is strange. Hooney frightens no, I, me. I regret... I regret ever having... And... Demonte... Even just one week. Demonte did an interview, and he said, Well, I want to be like Niski. And... Niski, in an interview, said, I want to be like Doonby. So, like... Ultimately, Demonte wants to be like Doonby. If you follow that line of thought. So what I'm... What I'm getting at is... What I'm getting at is... Demonte is actually starting to show some of that, like, Niski playmaking mid-style. Like, I mean, he's literally been playing Twisted Fate and Galio, like, all split long. Yeah. I mean, okay, if I, if I want to back down a little bit, I, got, I gotta be honest. Like, especially after this week, I'm, you know, Golden Guardians is looking a lot better, right? But, yeah. But, like, I, I don't know, man. I, I do really respect... Uh, Tanner mm -hmm. for, uh, <laughs> for the uh, for the tweet that he put out after uh, this past week. Mm -hmm. for his dig because yep. I, I uh, credit or credit to I don't understand why he's not on dig still. I, I don't. That is don't super care. true. I, I, I think I think you put you put Demonte back on dig. You get rid of you get rid of the dirty Inter Phoenix. You get rid of the uh, you get rid of the bot Froggen. I think you maybe maybe you have a team. Cause like Afro Moose Froggen was put before Demonte. Yeah, I think like, I think Afro Moose Demonte. I think you could maybe make that work. Maybe not with Dardock, because Dardock would kind of like just be screaming into the mic. But you put in you put in Chad Cadian, and you put you you take out the dirty right. Inter Viper and you put in Lorlo. I don't think they're good, but I, I think I think Viper a dirty Inter. It's not a dirty Inter. But I think I think Demonte definitely he just got. Only runs it down when he doesn't get riven. Demonte currently, I think, has the better end of the stick. I mean, he's got Hauntzer, he's got Closer, he's got FPI. The only thing that he's got the short end of the stick on is he has Huhi. Yeah, but Huhi. They seem to be. A, they seem to have been like kind of working. Like this is Huhi. This is the game plan for Golden Guardians. Originally, it was kind of going like this. Now they're just. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I'm excited to see how they continue to grow and continue to improve. We will, we will, continue, we will talk about TSM later. Alright, let's move on to number four. There you go. There's my ticket to Tanner time. Yeah, there's your ticket to Tanner time. Alright, so we've got... I think we, we could actually just... No, 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 no. We'll, we'll leave the third because we want to talk about TSM there. Um, you have FlyQuest as your number four. Yep. Um, I do not. Uh, I actually have Golden Guardians as my number four. So really, really? yes. So would you like to explain? Yeah. Would you like to explain your uh, your putting FlyQuest so low? Putting them so low. Yeah, putting them. I put them above Golden Guardians. <laughs> All right, rite of passage. Now. They're just, they're, they, uh, we can both agree on this. They're just better than Golden Guardians. Yeah, what? they are better they, than Golden Guardians currently. But, but, I think, okay, looking at the whole season, okay. yes, FlyQuest is better. 100% FlyQuest is better. I think Golden Guardians is, they're, they're going like this. Yeah. Whereas I think FlyQuest is kind of going like, they're they're, they're they're kind of they're kind of flopping down. I think they're in a slump. I see, I see that they they don't have as much promise as Golden Guardians does, as even Immortals does. Yeah. Whereas Hundred Thieves does. Yeah. You know the the FlyQuest lineup scares me because Solo's it, Solo's an orange set tr two trick. Santorin's the only thing I'm excited to watch in any other yeah. games. Power of Evil makes these super weird blunders that you just never expect him to do that have right. cost him the game. They don't have MASH anymore, but when they had MASH, MASH would int. And then Ignar, I hate Ignar. Yeah, no, nobody likes Ignar. We, we get, yeah, yeah, understood. And they just, they play so boring. They just yeah. play to scale and do team fights. Yeah, Wild Turtle plays Old Man League. It's it's very boring. I do think it's a good thing for them that they have Mash because Mash did show promise. And once they get Mash to stop inting, 
Nash Sambi has extreme potential. Yeah. You know, um, it's really hard to uh, sit behind the uh, 1500 kill wild turtle. <laughs> you know, he really didn't deserve that kill. No, Blabber 100% ran it down. <laughs> but, but anyways, I, you know, I see what you're saying with Solo. Um, Santorin, the Troll King. The Troll King! The troll King. I think he has a 100% win rate on Trump build this split so far. Really? Yeah. What a king. What a troll king. What a troll king, yes. Anyway, continue. I, I, continue. I think the troll king's looking good. Also, I just feel like... Um, noticing this at this point, if it, you know, most of the supports just in that line. Yeah. No. What do you mean no? Well, I think, you know, the the support that shows the most promise out of this list is probably Zazel. Probably. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think Aphromoo looks good. Aphromoo is the Maybe. only part of Dig I think is, like, functioning. <laughs> Has a brain. And the fact that he's functioning on a team that bad makes me think, if this guy was on a team that didn't have dirty enters, imagine how good he'd look. But, like, yeah, I agree. Smoothies looks bad. Hakuo Smoothies looks pretty... Hakuo is eh. Poom is eh. Hakuo is not bad. Treats. Yeah. Treats. I want to see more out of Treats, but if that was Biofrost, I'd say that looks bad. Huhi looks bad. Ignar looks bad. Zazel's, yeah, definitely. Zazel and Aphrim are the only two that I'm like, yeah, those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's all I have to say about FlyQuest, is they did good. Okay. Like you said, they play I, I I think they, 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 they play they, really they play really boring, but I think like they're like the be this is gonna sound weird. I think they're the benchmark team for good teams. Yes. If you can beat FlyQuest, you're in that top echelon. But if you can't, then you're only you're only a good team. If you can beat FlyQuest, you might go to Worlds. You have potential for Worlds. If you um. FlyQuest, go home. Which is why it's interesting, because Golden Guardians beat FlyQuest. Ah. Ah. So, if the split, if the split... But didn't Devontae... Did he go to Worlds? Yeah, he went to Worlds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, he went to Worlds. Ah, there you go. That all makes sense now. So, let's move on to, are you ready for top three? Yes. Alright, let's talk about Team Stinky Men. Team Stinky Men. Team Stinky okay, Men. So right. I have Flight Quest in third because, like I said, they're that the, they're that higher echelon team. If you can beat them, you can go to Worlds, which is why I'm so excited for Golden Guardians. All right, let's let's talk about let's talk about Team Stinky Men. Mm -hmm. Team suck much. Team All right, suck. you you talk about why you put them third first, and then I'm gonna tear you down. I don't know, man. I don't know, Mister. If you beat FlyQuest, you're a good team. Didn't they beat FlyQuest? They beat FlyQuest. Am I wrong? Do I, think, I need to pull up the charts? I think they're one in one. What, against FlyQuest? Hold on, I'm gonna check. I put, pull up the. Pull up the LCS the summer. All right, follow me. Follow me, chat. We're going to. Summer. I guess you're not chat. You're more like comment section. Viewers. Viewers. Um, FlyQuest. Oh, no, they're too well. TSM hasn't beaten them once. I'm right. What? I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, go on, go on, go ahead. Mandela effect. Never mind, then. <laughs> Never mind? Um, well, at that point, at least. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, chat. No, it's not. But no, I think, uh, I think the, uh, the main thing that drags down TSM mm -hmm. is Pika. Very true. Um, I feel like if they had not Spica, they would definitely be an even better contender. I think the reason I put them in third place is probably just because of their sheer luck and a Bjergsen backdoor. If it weren't for Beards and backdoors, they'd probably be like 
See, but it... Sixth place. Yeah, probably. Because they would have lost two games if I was back doors. Yeah. Or are you, you going to say Ix Smithy? You want them to get Ix Smithy? I want, I want to see this team. <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> Sorry, Immortals. Yeah, Sorry, Immortals. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Immortals. Bye-bye, Immortals. They lose. No, but in all seriousness, we can't live That's in cool. fantasy Steven land. does show some promise, but he needs to fix himself first. Put him back in Academy. He got maybe dragged like, in. Maybe, like, don't let him go for invades? Just put him on a yeah. Until he, until he, like, can figure out how to invade properly. Yeah. I don't know. It... My, my problem with Team Stinky Men is, I think... Because think about it, if they didn't get... If Bjergsen didn't carry, like, I think three games. Yeah. They're currently seven and five. They're third place. Seven and five? Six or seven and five. Can you check? They are seven and five. Yep, they're seven. And five. So if they lose those three games, if Bjergsen doesn't get those back doors, doesn't carry that one game against a hundred thieves, right. they're now uh, four and eight. They're now four and eight. Yeah, if they don't win those three games, seven minus three. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You mean if they didn't win? If they didn't win those. If they don't get those back doors, if they don't get that Azir carry game, they're 4-8, and eight, which puts them one above uh, Immortals and Dig. Yes. Like, that. I, I, I have such little confidence in that, man. Like, I think, yeah, I put them in fifth because they're getting those wins still. They, you know, they look a little bit, like, they're not, nobody on the team except Spika is running it down. I, double lift is doing the double lift thing, but they're not playing through him. The team just looks lost. They don't know what they want to do. I think that Bjergsen alone makes that team at least number four. I mean, in that case, I would probably say, yeah. I, I think, like, this team can go to Worlds. They just need to, like... I can't believe I'm saying this, but they need to start just playing through double lift. And I hate teams that play through double lift. I didn't like CLG. I didn't like I didn't like TSM when they played through double lift. I didn't like Team Liquid when they played through double lift. And I'm not gonna like this TSM when they play through double lift. But I think like right, right, right. at this point you're seven and five. You want to go to Worlds? He's won. Seven championships. Just playing through him. Yeah. He's that good. I don't think you win the championship this year, but at least you go to Worlds. They haven't been to Worlds since 2017. Like, right. there's already so much pressure on being TSM just as a brand. At least going to Worlds would, A, it would give experience to Broken Blade and Treats and Spica. And, <laughs> you know, that experience, I think that experience is important. So, yeah, you're forced to play through Doublelift. Boohoo. I, I won't like you as a team. I won't respect you as a team. But I'll respect Bjergsen, and that's enough. So I think this team could be third. They sh they when they commit to something, they look good. Yeah. When they committed to doing the tank fiddlesticks thing, they looked good. Yeah. No. When Bjergsen pulled out the middle fiddle. When they committed to the when they committed to him playing Azir, they looked good. They just, they need to commit, like, Bjergsen either needs, Bjergsen needs to be something. Mm -hmm. You put Broken Blade on tank duty, which the, it, it seems like they're already kind of doing that. Spika, put him on Sejuani, I'm done. I'm done with Spika being on carry Sejuani. champs, put him on Sedge. 
put him on set yep. Um, and then just have Doublelift play like Kaisa, Ezreal, whatever, and then mm -hmm. put right. Shreets on like Yumi. Anyway, I want to see more out of them. I really want to be excited for them, but I feel like the, it, um, it scares me the fact that there are six people in a room coming up yep. with a draft. And they make the drafts that they make. <laughs> that scares me. That scares the hell out of me. That six people in a room together are like, yes, let's play this draft. It, I'm afraid. Anyway, my fear aside, let's take a look at second place. I wonder what it is. Team Liquid... Team Liquid. Yeah. I, I think... Um, my boys. My boys. Team Liquid. I think... Uh, I think Team Team Liquid is looking good. Uh, they look like... If TSM had a direction, I think this is what they'd look like. Because I think... Broxa is basically on Spika's level when it comes to jungling. Yeah. Um, like, that is to say... Uh, commenters... He's bad. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. But they're bad in different ways. We can't, we can't just... Okay, 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 okay. Broxa doesn't... Speak a straight ints. Broxa just... Doesn't Broxa run doesn't it. run it down. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, okay, let's be fair. <laughs> but, like, I think you and I can pretty much agree on this. I think, like, they look by and far like the second place team, but that's yeah. all they look like. Yes. They don't look. They don't look like they could contest with the team above them. Yeah, but I, I still feel like it's going to be interesting when they play. It'll be interesting, but it's like they feel so like it feels like the Jensen and Core JJ show. Yeah. With tactical, you know, there as like you know the 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 back the backup dancer, the backup dancer, and then Impact has his job. Impact comes into the Team Liquid Alienware gaming room. He clocks in his card. He sits down. He flips his burgers. And then he walks out and he clicks his card in. Now he, he locks in a tank and then he just smashes his head on his keyboard and he goes home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. I think, I think Team Liquid, like... I, I, the only thing I don't like about Team Liquid, I like I like Impact. He has his job. He does his job the best he can. Um, he hasn't inted since that Cloud9 game. Um, right, right. You have Jensen, who is now like the main carry for the team. You have Tactical, who shows promise that he could be a really good ADC, but obviously you know he's a rookie. But you know they're working on that. And then you have Core JJ, who's making these insane setup plays, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have Broxa. What does Broxa do? He plays Graves. The, I wish he didn't! <laughs> put him put him on 20! Put him on... Put on Lee Sin! Put him on... Has he played Lee Sin? He has. His two main characters are Graves and Lee Sin so far. I'm okay with him being on Lee Sin, even if he's not a very mechanical player. Because put him on at Nidalee. least Lee Sin? No. Do, no. Do not put him on Nidalee. God, no. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. I I would gouge my eyes out. <laughs> I, put him on Olaf. Put him on Olaf. No! Be... No! Do not put Why him not? on carries. Just put him on Lee Sin. Say, alright, your only job is to get one kick. Get the one kick. And then he'd be like, okay. okay. And then he'd just hit R he'd, he'd go, and he'd hit the he did the R, and then they'd get the ADC. He would die. He would die. But he'd be like, If I die, I die. If, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> are, we just, are we just saying Brox is the Dolph Lundgren and Rocky Ford? No, because Dolph Lundgren was actually like a threat. Okay. <laughs> it's just, you, you send in the ogre, you say, Ogre, go! And he goes, Yes, I go. Kick! And then he just goes back. Then he dies! But at least they get the pick. Why wouldn't you want to see him on Olaf? I mean, granted, maybe Olaf, you know, even if Olaf's a carry. I have 
seeing mm. him play this much Graves, I am done with seeing him on something that can't set up plays. Unless T Liquid decides to completely change how they want to play, and they say, you know what, Broxa? You know what? You know what guy who plays on locked cam? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna get a Yumi, we're gonna get a Galio, and we're gonna we're trusting you. <laughs> I have lost my trust with Braxa. You put him on Trundle, you put him on Sejuani, you put him on Lee Sin. Those three things can start fights. I don't like Trundle. I don't like Lee Sin. I think they're both terrible characters. Yeah, yep. put Gragas. Gragas. Get Gragas. Gragas is actually good. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gragas, Sejuani, and then, I don't know, you can get Lee Sin in there because he likes to play Lee Sin. Give him a nice little Lee Sin dog treat. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, no. I, I could go on and on with Team Liquid. I think they're a really good team. I'm really excited to see them play Cloud9. I'm not excited to see Broxa play Cloud9. I really want Broxa to show me why he got hired to this team. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to see it, which means, unfortunately, that means our number one team is going to... First, first, I have a question for you. I thought about this, right? Go ahead. I have a question specifically for you. This is a bit of a this or that kind of question. Oh! And... <laughs> this or that with... This laser... that kind of question. Hold on, so, hold on. This or so... that with... Um... Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, me or C with Lazy Boy and Wild Z. <laughs> Alright, anyway, go ahead. This or that. Yes, so... What does Core JJ have more control over? Tacticals... <laughs> Gameplay or Tacticals Twitter? Ooh. Yes. Tactical does some questioning things sometimes, whereas Core JJ gets to type every single individual letter for the Twitter, so I've got to say it's Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, probably, but I, I do still like to imagine that just that's my fantasy. It's just I, I, wanna, I wish I could sit there in the, in the Team Liquid War Room and just watch Core JJ and Tactical on their computers, and Cordae's just like, hit that minion. Now hit that other minion. Hit that minion. Now poke. Oh, yeah. we go in now. We go in now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of that. <laughs> Use your ult now. Full, yeah. Press W. Full micro man. Press yeah. W, quick. Yes. Your pass is up. Alright. So yeah, I think I think definitely I think tactical shows a lot of promise. Core JJ and Jensen look like MVPs. Impact does his job. Broxa's Broxa, but unfortunately because of all of those things, I think uh, yeah yeah we still have our number one team as Cloud Nine. Right. Um. I I, I don't know I don't know which, I I think even though they lost two games, you see that FlyQuest game where they're actually trying, and it's like whoa. They're back! <laughs> They're back, yeah, exactly. Ugh, even though uh, Blabber gave his one... Uh, Blabber gave over... In. Yeah, I mean, Blabber has to give over one in every game so he feels in control of the game. <laughs> he has to remind his teammates, I am in control. Me! I decide whether we win or lose! <laughs> yes. And then sometimes he decides to do more than one of his tactical ints. Um, but yeah, no, I think this team looks great. I think they by and far have the best team play. They have the best chemistry. They have the best yeah. mechanics. They have the best stats. If I didn't put them as first, I actually might be on crack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't think you can really... It's not really up for debate. If Team Liquid somehow pulls out a, an amazing win, if Broxa, uh, if Broxa goes into a time machine and he comes back with 2018 Broxa from Worlds, maybe, maybe, maybe Team Liquid has a chance. You know, you don't want to see, uh, yeah, I, I would like to see uh, 2018 Broxa living in uh, Blabber's head rent-free. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see, I want to actually see a jungle that can type at the end of the game, jungle diff, and mean it. And mean it, true. I want somebody to contest Blabber. I want Blabber, because I like Blabber a lot. I want him to get better. I want someone to be like, no, I'm not going to let you get away with doing every th stupid thing you do. Maybe Blabber is the main character of the whole story, the whole world. 
They just let him do whatever he wants. The only jungler that's like tried to stop him is Santorin. Because Santorin's like the super, like he's a defensive jungler. But like, it's still just not enough. So I don't know. Maybe we get the big mean ogre um, this coming weekend. Yes. But I think uh, that is actually going to uh, wrap us up. Uh, do you have yeah. anything that you'd like to? Do you have anything you'd like to say to the uh, viewers? Well, yeah, the last thing I was just gonna say is it'd be interesting to see the the Niski v Jensen rematch. Oh yeah, because last last I still think last game I think Jensen hard beat Niski. Yeah. So I, agree. I would like to see. I would definitely like to see that rematch for sure. Um. Anyways. That's going to be the end of this podcast. I'll probably not put in outro music here. Um, hopefully we can continue to keep doing this. I would like to have this maybe as like a bi-weekly or once a weekly thing. Maybe we get on guests every once in a while if I could find a way to get guests. Um, we'll see what we do. Hopefully it's not always just going to be us talking about the top ten of the teams. Um, yes. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. Uh, I'm gonna talking about patch notes. I'm gonna try to not rip off um, LS and uh, I will dominate too much. Um, but we'll see what we do. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Uh,